Be nice to your mother and always say please. Be loyal to friends and compost your enemies. Be nice to your mother. Well, now I gotta do a lot more cutting. Welcome back. It's been a very busy few days. Been doing all kinds of work on the homestead. We had a ton of rain. Been digging some garden beds. And I got a, I got like the most amazing machete ever. I mean, look at this. I mean, this, this is, this is a sword. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So the Heatmaster tomato transplants, look at these things. These look really, really, really good and better than my, my direct seeded ones. As a matter of fact, if you come down here and take a look at the ones that my son put in, we kind of went along this row here. This is new bed dug here. And then over here is the ones my son put in. And see, they're spaced out really nicely and he went and got stakes out of the woods. And this, these are already making tomatoes right here, but these were planted a little earlier than the rest of our tomatoes. But obviously this variety is well suited to here and quite happy. But if we come down here and look past the mustards, the mustards are doing very nicely. Mustards look good. But if you come past the mustards, these are the Lucid Gem that are in the Richard bed, and they actually look quite good, but you can see we, we lost the ones out of here, and we lost the ones that were right here, so what I did was plant a little bit of corn to fill in the gap. Planted a little double row of corn here of a variety I wanted to try. But we have four of the Lucid Gem, and we have right here, mostly we're doing pretty good on the carbons, but you see they're not that big. You know, they're going to pull through, but they're not that big. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. But you can see in the other tomato beds, this is our last surviving mortgage lifter right here. One. One left out of ten. The other ones that are down here are a variety called Symbol. And this is another tropical variety. I can't find hardly any data on it, but a local guy was growing them so there you go um, and then where my daughter and I planted beans in the areas of the gaps because we want to keep stuff moving we want to have food so the ones that have the little white rocks next to them are transplants I put in later to fill in the holes uh, this variety here is the chocolate pear and we have three not so great looking ones of these left but it looks like they might pull through this is the um, Berry's, Berry's Crazy Cherry. Yeah, these are Berry's Crazy Cherry right here. So we actually have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of these left. And there was one here, I think. Here, it's gone. So we planted, again, we planted more beans here and I'm gonna have to fill something in here too, just to keep the, the gaps going. This is the uh, Pantano Romanesco, which looks, we've got some pretty good looking ones here. We've got four good ones, two kind of wussy looking ones, and then there's some beans down here. And the, because it's been raining, we've got a lot of little weeds emerging right now. And if we come down here, these are the white Tomasol. These are not that big. See, we get, we're getting like this kind of thing, which is some of the ones I pulled up, they've got, you know, nematodes on the roots, which is not good. But see, we get a couple of small ones, and then we've got a couple here that look like they're gonna pull it off. This one will probably pull through. This one's a wimp. I don't know. And then the last one is Brad's Atomic Grape. These guys are, look at, I mean, this, this is ridiculous. This is not gonna do anything. This has been like this for weeks now. Itty bitty, sad little thing. This one's a little better, right here. This one's quite a bit better, but still not what I would like to see growth-wise for this period of time. So, 
you know, we're gonna figure it out. We're gonna see which ones actually pull on through. I have another member of the Nightshade family I wanna do something with now, so you can join me. We're gonna do this. This is gonna be cool. So this is really funny right here. You see these, these are tobacco. These tobacco here are growing in with these bromeliads. These tobacco here are growing in with a cola nut. These are growing with a cocoa plum. These are growing with what is probably a kumquat. And this one's all by himself. So these tobacco showed up in these pots because uh, sometime last year I had tobacco seeds. I was drying out seed pods on the porch and the seeds blew everywhere. And then we had a bunch of rain and they were getting taken care of in the plant nursery, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, and they have just popped up. So these are self-seeded tobacco. Tobacco is usually a pain in the neck to germinate. And here they just went and did it on their own because they were perfectly happy kind of in the half shade conditions and now they've popped up. So I figured, well, let's not look a gift horse in the mouth. We will plant them out. So we've dug this bed right here. Uh, just a couple days ago, Rachel helped me dig this bed and we planted, we made this ugly little trellis here, kind of a weird ugly trellis. And in the middle of it here, these are Malabar spinach that are going to be climbing up it. That's a red spinach. And then these are the papaya that I planted in the previous video. So some of these little papaya things, the papaya will grow. They're going to get taken care of like they're really you know, well taking care of vegetables, getting lots of water and stuff because this being the dry season, it could get really dry for a while and having them out here in the gardens is really good. So I just kind of built beds around them knowing that later this is going to be a papaya area, but we might as well get a good crop of vegetables or tobacco or whatever else before they actually come in. So it's tobacco planting time and I'm going to use my sword to plant tobacco. This one's just ridiculous. Just insane. There you go. Let's put my precious, my precious, precious potting soil back to reuse it again. But I could stick this guy right in here. Be happy. Looks pretty good. Let's see, what was originally in here? White flesh loquat. It's really a shame. I remember those loquats. They were delicious. Planted a bunch of seeds. Seeds rotted. The tobacco grew, so like a phoenix. So I've got to divide out the, look at those, look at those citrus roots. It's got to be a kumquat. I think that's a kumquat from seeds I got from my old food forest. Tobacco is actually quite happy to be transplanted most of the time. I, I have very little trouble transplanting it. She does a really good job. It's fine little roots. You know, transplanting kind of beats the roots up on a lot of things. Some things just cannot take it. Like if you ever try to transplant melons or beans, no good. But, you know, these guys are pretty tolerant usually. The ground is nice and soft. I don't have to even use my sword to dig. You come over here. You go in here. I have no idea what variety of tobacco this is, if anybody wants to ask. Uh, my guess is it's probably a cigar type. It's, the, the plants are very strong flavored. Um, the, the leaves are quite strong flavored and they came from a friend of mine who had them self-seed in his yard. And so it gave me some of the seed pods and I started some. And then this is second generation got some talonum seedlings trying to poke their way up. Once you have talonum, you always have talonum. Not sure if it's fruticosum. 
but it is a talonum. Oh, what fun! Oh, look at this little baby. Oh, I don't know even know about that one. We'll see what happens. Put it in anyways. You just need a little top off. Save money on potting soil by using some garden dirt. I think it's got enough loose soil in there that it'll be just fine. All right, now you can grow. Gotta be careful with these bromeliads. I'm not gonna try and dump them out. I'm just gonna extricate these tobacco and put them right here. Because the uh, bromeliads have serious, vicious teeth on their leaves. Any of you guys eat, read that uh, book, Eat Dirt? He recommends, you know, being getting exposed to all kinds of dirt for your immune system and all that. I think transplanting tobacco with your bare hands into nice, wet, tropical garden muck. I'm probably getting exposed to all kinds of stuff. Incredible amounts of stuff. Let's pull you out from the side. Oh, you still got a pretty good chunk there. You hear the parrots in the background. It's the time of day when the parrots go from one side of the mountain to the other. Kind of like it. There we go. That looks pretty good. Got one more pot full of little ones here, so I could probably just put them over here. But I won't bore you with having to watch the entire transplanting process. That's just it's too much. I'm not that entertaining. So you remember that I cut the tops off of these Coffea liberica, in my, my little coffee hedge right here. I cut the tops off. They are coming back on about half of them right now. The other ones haven't started to sprout buds yet, but I'm sure they will. I'm not worried. We've gotten plenty of rain. They had been in the ground for quite a while before I brutally cut their heads off. Yo, 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 you gotta prune your plants. Gotta fight that apical dominance. Yo, 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 you gotta prune your plants. Gotta fight that apical dominance. And yeah, they're gonna do fine. The seedlings that I put over here, I've got a row of them. They're starting to grow. After some initial sunburn, you can see how the leaves got burned. Even though this is a shady area, the coffee is really susceptible to changes in sunlight. They've got to get used to it. And so there's some sunburn on the bottom, but it's it's starting to they're starting to grow. They're catching, looking pretty good right along here. I think these are gonna these are gonna really grow. They may even outgrow the ones that I pruned. It's uh it's amazing how fast like small plants will grow. So if you, like if you have a chance, you got a little citrus and you got a little bigger citrus in a pot, but the bigger citrus is kind of bound up in the bottom, just go with a little citrus because it's probably going to outgrow the other one because it doesn't have to deal with it. These guys were really, really root bound and unhappy. And, you know, I'm, I'm getting them back, but they just may not have that vigor for the first year or so that a seedling would. So another bit of brutal pruning here. This is the top of this this breadfruit. Look at that. Took that thing right off with one swing of my machete. And the reason is breadfruit can get absolutely gigantic and turn this entire area into darkness. And I don't want that. What I want is a tree that's maybe eight feet tall. I don't even know if that's possible or if I can keep on top of it and make it do that. But what I, what I can do that I know will keep it small from the beginning is instead of letting it just go straight up, we gotta fight that apical dominance. So I cut it right here and there are buds on the sides here that are going to shoot and it will give me some branches to the side. Hopefully I'll get some good ones and it'll keep the tree from just going immediately straight up and it will, will stunt it and keep it down. 
breadfruit can produce really quickly, so I'm not that worried about you know stopping its future life or whatever else by pruning it. It would be really bad to just have a tree that gets 60 foot tall over here. Well, that's the last thing you need for the garden beds. I can handle a tree that's small. I can dedicate the space to it. They're really good producers of starch, but gigantic, I don't want. So off with its head. So we've got some good looking pak choy. We've got the edible leaf hibiscus, the longevity spinach down here on the ground. We've got some okay looking kale. We've got some stunted cauliflower. These should have gotten much bigger than this, but I just got some seeds for cauliflower. I'm gonna start a whole round of them. These guys got attacked by ants when they were young that dug into the base and chewed the roots up on the transplants, which is really kind of brutal. Then we've got uh, bell peppers, which are getting ready to, they're actually starting to bloom now. One of, my, one of my kids has a bell pepper that's actually making peppers at the moment, but mine aren't doing it yet. Almost, almost getting there. And then okra, and then I put some more beans in the gaps here where I had some transplants that died, more okra. And the pak choy we've been just eating continuously. So this is one that I know, like I said uh, in the previous video. Oh, look at that. I could just stab stuff with this. Buy weeds. <laughs> oh, yes. Don't even have to bend down. It's, so, it's so awesome. So since I know that these guys grow really well, I'm starting a whole bunch of them right now. The carrots. This is the Amarillo carrots. These are looking pretty good. They look like they're going to probably make carrots. I have a really big uh, gap right here. I had a little help when I was planting, and I think they got a little bit too deep. But otherwise, you know, these this part of the garden is looking pretty good, but this is mostly where the greens are. There are some mustards, and we've got these good-looking lettuces right here. Those guys are really happy. And then more bells. And This is a paprika pepper. I don't think we only have... No, we have two of those. And then we've got the longevity spinach, which is starting to spread out. It can almost become a ground cover if you let it go and you can get a lot of leaves off it. So this is this is good, but this was just our like preliminary little bit of gardening. And now I'm getting really serious because I've got my transplant trays and stuff. So I can start a bunch of stuff. And then as different things come out and get harvested, like when these beans over here, these bean beds that I did come out and those beans are ready, which is like 40 days from now, they'll be done. At that point, I could just turn around and maybe fill the entire bed full of pak choy so I can kind of rotate through or I might put another round of tomatoes in there you know just add on the tomatoes when the tomatoes start coming out I'll have something else to transplant in there I might put tobacco over there I might put corn over there but we can keep rotating through plant families and putting things in and I can just continuously be producing my own transplant since the transplanting seems to work better than direct seeding with a lot of these plants why not we just keep learning and going and now that we have a great big laboratory we could experiment in you know it's easy this watermelon right here look at these leaves really deeply lobed leaves this is from Indonesia some uh, some of the folks I met at one of the villages when I was there teaching gave me some seeds and uh, so I'm trying them out here this is really kind of interesting unfortunately it is going to cross with our local watermelon seeds because I gave these to my son. He planted a whole bunch of them and most of them didn't come up and then he planted some of the local variety of watermelon over here and you can really see the difference in the the leaves. You know this this has a more traditional what I think of as a traditional watermelon leaf it doesn't have that really deep lobing. They're much thicker leaves and these guys are already making watermelons. There's some little baby watermelons on here. This is my son's bed. And the interesting thing is, he planted them on this construction sand we had left over. And the ones that were on the sand are really, really, really happy. But this one, look at this. This one was planted right in the clay. And it is a shrimp. It's doing almost nothing. But the guys that got planted over on the sand, this white sand, are just going crazy. So, go figure. You know, who knows. I also, as you can see, pruned the living daylights out of the starfruit tree because it was getting, it had like eight more feet up and we couldn't reach anything and all it did was drop star fruit on the ground or the birds would eat the star fruit from the top and we've, we've finished that problem. I may prune it a little bit more but I want to see how much the branches pull down with a load of star fruit on it. And right here now is the new plant nursery area. I was able to gather my various plants 
and I am back in the nursery business at least very small time right now and you know I've got my black Suriname cherries got sugar apples um, I've got the West Indian locust tree I've got cola nuts I've got chocolate pudding fruit I've got some sort of poteria that's related to canistel but it's not actually canistel I've got hey this is the uh, this is the nut, the suicide nut here. Fish poison tree, Barringtonia asiatica, right there. Uh, you guys saw the uh, uh, the nut on one of my live streams. And there you go, there's a tropical almond right there. I've got some neem trees. I've got dates. Um, my friend Abbas in the States brought me some dates, some medjool dates. And so I've got those, got some acerola cherries. I got all kinds of fun stuff. But it's, it's, this was all like bits and pieces that started on my porch and the kids had started and here we go. I've got a nice little nursery area to keep them in and, and I was able to weed most of them. There's still a lot of junk in here because we're, we gathered pots from the four corners of the earth. So some of this stuff is pretty junky and hasn't been sorted yet. But it's way better than it was. I've even got some Pereschia. Pretty cool. Sea grapes. I'm going to stop. I could just keep naming stuff. I'm going to stop. Aki, stop! Well, we're not quite all the way up to where the corn is, but I wanted to stop and show you this. These are uh, beans growing in between the Gros Michel bananas that we started over here. And they are super, everything is super happy in here with all the water that's getting. I could have slowed it down more. Like one of you guys said, I should have built swales so it goes really slow through. But uh, as it is, I'm very happy with it. These, these beans are about to start blooming. Looking pretty good. And uh, the bananas, they don't seem to need anything. Good little gray water setup. And then in between here, see these little pits. Um, a couple of my boys came out here today and I, I bought them a little bit of popcorn to plant. So they just got a, a bag of popcorn from the store and they planted all these little pits. They came out here and hoed pits in the ground and planted popcorn just for a little fun. A little popcorn garden along the edge here. Let's go up and take a look at the corn now. A lot of rain, like I said, and some of the bananas decided to fall over, and they fell over on some of the corn, which is coming up right here. Corn looks pretty good, despite being uh, put underneath some bananas. Uh, most of these little pits have the seeds germinated, but I, I had help with the planting of some of them, so there's like a stretch of them of maybe 10 that doesn't have anything coming up. So we'll have to, <laughs> maybe, I don't know, maybe I'll plant a pumpkin over there or something. It's nice to have all the corn coming up at the same time for pollination's sake, but what are you gonna do? It's, it's um, more valuable to have the kids out in the yard and learning how to do things. If I just said, I'm gonna do everything myself, I'm gonna plant everything myself, I would not be a good dad. So we do things together and then they learn. Why didn't those come up? Oh, I planted them you know, four inches deep or whatever. That's why, okay, so next time, plant them an inch deep and I think that's what happened. Uh, oh yeah, dug pits and the uh, seeds got thrown in them and it's just kicked over and it's like four or five inches. Too much. Uh, I also took the opportunity to plant a June plum tree. This is a June plum. A June plum can get really, really, really big. There's actually that like stick thing over there is an ill June plum next door and it's really, really tall. They can get like 60 feet. I don't want that to happen, so I've got to come out here and just whack, decapitate it. Um, but they'll produce really fast. They also have edible leaves, so it's like a double duty. You get a vegetable out of it, and you get fruit out of it. But all through here, we've got corn coming up, and it's, it's gonna be hard to spot until the corn gets a little bigger because there's a, there's a ton of weeds coming up again because of the rain. There's just clusters and clusters and clusters of weeds. You can see the entire ground is, is green, which is fine. We'll deal with it, but it's, uh, you know, it, we're, we're going to have to deal with it. Like once the corn gets about this tall, I've got to come through here with a string trimmer or we might just take the gray hoe and kind of scrape around each one. So this is the results of my son's experiment here. He stripped all the leaves off this mulberry. He said, Dad, do you think if we strip all the leaves off, like you can do with an apple to induce blooming, 
It says, and if you if we strip all the leaves out this mulberry, do you think it will bloom and make mulberries? Well, it is. It's working. So uh, four mulberries right here. I got some more mulberries. Looks like. His intuition was correct, and we're going to get uh, maybe 20-something mulberries off this little bush. That's very interesting. I love that he's thinking that way. Really, really cool. You know, he, he knew about it from me mentioning it with apples, and he said, let's try it with a mulberry. Yeah, that's pretty good for a little kid. Um, so, yeah, that, now we know. And he's, he asked me right away if we could take the other mulberry. This is actually dwarf black mulberry. But he asked me if we could take this other mulberry which is right here, and do the same thing. This one is a big tree variety. This is the uh, Sixth Street Mulberry from Gainesville, the Edible Plant Project. See the great big leaves on it? Really easy to strip, but I think I might let this guy get a little bigger first because I don't want it putting all its energy into making mulberries in the dry season. We'll just let it go. Pretty cool. Nice to see the experiment, though. So as a family, we cleared from one side of the food forest all the way over to the other. It was all just, there's so many vines and things, it was ridiculous. And I brought a hose up here so I could get stuff started and water, and then I ended up not needing it because we got tons and tons of rain. It was still raining again today. But since I was already planting the corn up here, we planted this whole first part with corn, uh, I went ahead and I planted some pumpkin hills. There are pumpkin hills like every 10 feet or so. There's one right here. It's not really much of a hill. But I dug a pit, poured some raw manure down into it, and then put the soil back over the top and planted a few pumpkins. When we cleared, we left all this lantana. This stuff started itself, and the butterflies really, really love it. So I figured, hey, let's keep it. You know, and we cleared around all the good trees that were here. I planted Pereschia, which is an edible fruited cactus, and sometimes known as Barbados gooseberry. That's what I read. Uh, but I had to figure out what it was. I got it when I was at the uh, Rare Fruit and Vegetable Council. I got some seeds and I had no idea what it was. And then it got identified later on Instagram. <laughs> and then I left these nitrogen fixing trees and I'm gonna let them grow to my height and then cut the tops of them off. But I figured if I've got these nitrogen fixers, the Pereschia really likes to scramble and climb, so they are serving double duty. The Pereschia, when it starts to sprawl, I can tie it up on these guys as they get thicker and taller and let them go. I also put a sapodilla in here. Uh, my friend Marta gave me this one that she started from seed multiple years ago, and she said it was from a really sweet sapodilla, so I planted that. And I'm very, very happy to, to have it because we didn't have any decent sized sapodilla. And sapodilla is a really good fruit. If you haven't had it, it's like, oh, it's like candy brown sugar pie. It's just unbelievable. Really, really sweet and delicious. Like your, your, your pancreas immediately freaks out and starts like punching your liver going, let me out! Oh, so good. So good. So up to the top part of the food forest, we're just gonna go ahead and plant pumpkins, and I might put some more corn as we go down there. But I could almost feel the trees like catching their breath and going, thank you so much for freeing us up as we went through and, and, and opened it. And I, you know, I shredded some, took some cardboard and put it around the base of some of them. It's a work in progress. It's still kind of messier looking than I would like, but you know, bit by bit, we, we've got, we keep, like leaving pots and stuff in the front yard because I keep planting stuff. Like I planted over in the little rock garden right there, I planted a date palm. So, you know, there's the pot right there. I just have to actually carry it down. So, yeah, it feels good. We should have lots and lots of food in the ground, plenty to eat, and, you know, Lord willing, we keep getting a little bit of rain. So this is kind of a long video through the gardens and stuff but that's what we've been doing lately i figured you guys don't mind seeing everything kind of do a whole bunch of updates at once so thanks for watching uh catch you all next time be sure to like and subscribe and hit the little hit the little bell and until next time get yourself like a really big sword and may your thumbs always be green testing one two three
Hit my rabbit beneath the cherry tree One fine afternoon Someday I know that we'll meet again On a fruit salad spoon Laid my hamster to rest last night Beneath the pumpkin vine Someday I know that we'll meet again In a Thanksgiving pie If it dies when it's at my house It'll end up in the soil My trees are all fed by pets Shuffling off this mortal Put my pup beneath the garden bed One early winter morn Someday I know that we'll meet again In a lovely row of corn If it dies when it's at my house It'll end up in the soil My trees are all fed by pets Shuffling off this mortal coil Laid the tax man to rest last night Beneath the money tree I know that we'll never meet again Cause he won't be in heaven with me If it dies when it's at my house It'll end up in the soil My trees are all fed by pets Shuffling off this mortal coil Buried my rabbit neath the cherry tree One fine afternoon One day I know that I will meet again on a fruit salad spoon